So yesterday we were first learning about elimination. We said that one of the ways to, to solve a systems of equation was to make sure that one of the variables would eliminate. Today we're going to look at elimination problems that are slightly more complicated. So let me show you what I mean by that. Sometimes you might need to multiply an equation by a number in order to make the coefficients cancel. Yesterday we saw, for example, that we might sometimes need to multiply by negative 1 in order to change one of the numbers to a negative so that it will cancel. But the key here is that you get to choose the best number for the multiplication. So if it seems like multiplying by negative 1 won't do the trick, you can pick a different number. It is up to you to choose. So let's look at an example. Solve using elimination. When I see elimination, I know I better make sure everything's lined up. So the x's are lined up, the y's are lined up, the equals are lined up, the numbers are lined up. But now if I look at the numbers, 2 and a 4 will not cancel. There's an invisible 1 by the y, which will not cancel the 11. And multiplying by a negative 1 here will not help me. If I change this to a negative 2, it's still not going to cancel the 4. If I change this to a negative 1, it's still not going to cancel the 11. What we can do instead is multiply by a different number. For example, I know that for I could make the x's cancel if the x here became a negative 4. So to make that happen, I could choose to multiply by negative 2. Now why am I thinking negative 2? Well, in order to change the 2 to a 4, I would need to multiply by 2. And I need one of the numbers to be negative so that it'll cancel, so I'm going to choose to multiply by negative 2. Now let's see if that actually works. So if I distribute the negative 2, I get negative 4x and then negative 2 times 1 would give me negative 2y equals negative 2 times negative 9 would give me negative or positive 18. Now the second equation doesn't change. So for the second equation it would be 4x plus 11y equals 9. Now if I look at the numbers, the negative 4 and the positive 4 will cancel now. So if I add negative 2y plus 11y would be 9y equals 18 plus 9 would be 27. And if I divide by 9 on both sides, I would get y equals 3. So it worked. Multiplying by negative 2 made some of my variables cancel. And I got to pick what number to choose. So, if I take the 3 and I plug it back into the original problem, I get 2x plus, instead of the y, I would have 3 equals negative 9. I would subtract 3 on both sides, so I would get 2x equals negative 12, and then I would divide by 2, so x equals negative 6 which means my answers are is neg my answer is negative 6 comma 3 now there are a couple things about this multiplying you can multiply the top bottom or both equations by numbers if necessary. So this time I multiplied only the top equation by a number to make this work. I could do that to the top and the bottom, just the bottom, it's totally up to you. As long as you multiply correctly, so you distribute that number to every other number in that equation. All right, let's take a look at another example. So if I look at example one here, I want to use elimination, so I need to make sure everything is lined up. The x's line up with the x's, the y's line up with the y's, the equals is line up, and the numbers line up. Great. None of the numbers here are going to cancel. 6 doesn't cancel 2, 5 doesn't cancel 3. But I could make that happen by 
I can turn the 2 into a 6 by multiplying by 3. But I also need that number to be a negative, so I'm going to multiply by negative 3. Now, why would I choose negative 3? Well, if I want the x's to cancel, I, I right away see that 2 times 3 would give me 6. That's an easy one. 3 times something will never give me 5. It's a little bit more difficult to do it that way. So, the first equation doesn't change. 6x plus 5y equals 19. The second equation, negative 3 times 2 is negative 6x. Negative 3 times 3 is negative 9y. And negative 3 times 5 is negative 15. Now, the 6x and the negative 6x will cancel. So this worked. Which means I get negative 4y equals 4. I'm going to divide both sides by negative 4, and that gives me negative 1. From here, I'm going to take the negative 1, plug it into the original problem, and solve and get x. So I would have 6x plus 5 times negative 1 equals 19. 5 times negative 1 is negative 5. I would add the 5 on both sides. So 6x equals 24. And then I would divide by the 6 on both sides. So x equals 4. Which means my final answer will be 4 common negative 1. Alright, let's take a look at another few examples. So problem number 2. The first thing I notice is that the x's, the y's, the numbers, the equals, they're all lined up. That's good. Now we want to make somebody cancel. What I see right away is that the 6 and the 2, which are the numbers by the x's, are super close to canceling. All I would have to do to make them cancel would be to multiply the bottom equation by a 3. Now you might be wondering, why not a negative 3? Well, the x here on the bottom already has a negative number as a coefficient. So if I multiply by another negative, that would become positive, which is not my goal. I want that number to stay negative. Now let's just write down what we get. The first equation doesn't change. So 6x minus 2y equals 1. Then I would distribute, so I would get negative 6x. 3 times 3 is 9, positive 9y. And 3 times negative 5 is negative 15. Now the x's here are going to cancel. So negative 2y plus 9 will be 7y equals 1 plus negative 15 will be negative 14. Divide both sides by 7, y equals negative 2. Now I'm going to take the negative 2 and I'm going to plug it into the first equation here, which means I get 6x minus 2 times, and instead of the y, I'm going to fill in negative 2, equals 1. Negative 2 times negative 2 is 4. I would subtract the 4 on both sides. I would get x equals negative 3. So if I divide by 6, I get x equals negative 1 half, which means my answer to this problem would be negative 1 half comma negative 2. Now problem number 3 on this page says check your solution to number 2. So let's see if we can figure this out. We need to check both of the original equations to see if this ordered pair satisfies both original problems. So first, I'm going to take this x and this y and plug them into the first equation. 6 times the x is negative 1 half minus 2 times the y is negative 2 equals 1. Now if I use my calculator or if I just know this in my head, 6 times a half is negative 3 negative 2 times negative 2 is 4. So negative 3 plus 4 would be 1 equals 1. It works for the first equation. For the second equation, I would have negative 2 
times negative 1 half plus 3 times negative 2 equals negative 5. Negative 2 times negative 1 half is 1 minus 6 because 3 times 2 is negative 6 so we would get negative 5 equals negative 5 which is true. But we are not done. Just like we saw in yesterday's video we need to write a sentence here to justify our answer. So we would say negative 1 half comma negative 2 is the solution because it satisfies both original equations. This is the part that a lot of students forget. So it's really important that you guys make sure that you put like stars by this and like explosions and stuff like that because this is super important to remember to write down. All right, let's take a look at number five. So number five looks a little bit different. In number five, the, the variables are not lined up. What I mean is the x's are not on top of the x's, the y's are not on top of the y's, the numbers are not on top of the numbers, the equals are not on top of the equals. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna take the second equation and I'm gonna move the x by subtracting the three x to the other side, which gives me negative three x plus two y equals negative nine. Now if I copy down the first equation, 4x plus 5y equals 35, I can see that my x's and my y's and my equals and my numbers all do line up. That's a good thing. Now I want to make somebody cancel. I notice that the 3 and the 4 do not cancel, neither do the 2, the 2, and the 5. And there's nothing I can multiply 3 by to get 4, and there's nothing I can multiply 4 by to get 3. Same thing with 2 and 5. 2 times something will never give you 5. 5 times something will never give you 2. So this is an example where you might need to multiply both original equations. To make the, the x's cancel, what I would do is I would multiply the top by 4, because that's the bottom number, and I would multiply the bottom by 3, because that's the top number. Now you might be asking yourself, why not a negative 3? If I multiply this by negative 3, that's going to turn this into a negative number, and then I'm going to have two negatives, which will not cancel. So I want to think ahead a little bit. One of them is already negative. That's good enough. So when I multiply here, for the top equation, 4 times negative 3 is negative 12x. 4 times 2 is positive 8y. 4 times negative 9 is negative 36. Now for the bottom equation, 3 times 4 is positive 12x. This is looking good. 3 times 5 is positive 15y. And 3 times 35 would be 105. Now the x's will cancel. So, 8 plus 15 is 23y equals 105 minus 36 is 69. Now if I divide by 23, I get y equals 3. Now I'm going to take this y, I'm going to plug it into the original problem, and I'm going to find x. So 4x plus 5 times, and instead of the y, I'm going to write 3, equals 35. 5 times 3 is 15, so 4x plus 15 equals 35. I'm going to subtract the 15 on both sides, so 4x equals 20, and then I'm going to divide by 4 on both sides, so x equals 5, which means my final answer here would be 5 comma 3. So my final answer is 5 comma 3. This is an example where you need to multiply both of these equations by a number in order to make something cancel. All right, we will go over this tomorrow again, and we will practice this a whole bunch of times. I will see you then. Thanks so much for watching.